Hello everyone. Um, I'm Sally Skipsy from Stamford Welland and this is obviously Max. I don't exist anymore, it's all about me. <laughs> so, first of all, why, why look into getting a therapy dog? So, um, we had uh, a pot of money in our wellbeing fund that as you know, schools are aware, sometimes it gets sucked into a deficit or whatever's going on. And, and I was uh, asked what I wanted to do with it. And I've always had dreams of introducing a therapy dog into a secondary school because it's quite unique for a secondary school to have a therapy dog. Stanford Welland um, is a small school. We've only got 450 secondary age school, uh, school students up to 16. And we have a very high level of people premium, but also a high level of mental health concerns and well-being, emotional well-being concerns. So did quite a lot of research specifically into Blackpool because the majority of schools in Blackpool, whether they're secondary or primary, have a school dog um, and their um, benefits are all over the internet. So these are the benefits that we found. So they have a cognitive benefit. There's a lot of problem solving that goes with the dog. A lot of our children um, and young people help me with Max and they have to solve some very tricky problems that Max puts them into. Um, obviously there's the social element with having a dog and um, the emotional support that Max gives. And I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. The physical element it's certainly got me up moving, I have to say. Um, environmental and reading, and that's something that we're starting to introduce. Um, I know a lot of primary schools have a reading dog come in. Um, secondary schools, it's quite a new thing. Um, and uh, it, it's a bit different for a secondary school student to be reading to a dog, but our year sevens are absolutely loving it. So before we got Max then, obviously you can't just bring a dog into a school, that'd be a bit strange. So we had a consultation with all staff, students and parents and it was overwhelmingly positive. We only have one negative from a parent and that was about whether um, a child with allergies would be affected by Max um, or any dog, because we haven't chosen them at that point. Um, we went for a hypoallergenic breed um, and he's a cockapoo mixed with a poodle. So he's like quadruply hypoallergenic. He doesn't shed a thing, so it's been wonderful but also no child is forced to be with Max. So they have to opt in. So they all know where he lives in the school. Um, he doesn't live there overnight, that came out wrong. Uh, where he is in the school and they can choose to come in if they want to. Obviously, if they have allergies, then they don't. The biggest thing is our head teacher is severely allergic to dogs and she's fine with Max. So I know we're okay. We then found a reputable breeder. He's from a, a lovely home breeder who's only had one litter and Max was one. Uh, we did a risk assessment and a policy, both agreed by our governors, and staff had to buy into this because obviously as a, as a SSA and a mental health lead, I can't be only solely responsible for Max. So I have brilliant staff that will help walk him. They have him overnight if I'm on training. Um, they have him for respite because having a puppy is like having a newborn baby. Um, <laughs> and also, like I said, they have to pick up food. So, you know, they, they have to be involved in it. And things like lessons, so we're getting him more and more into lessons. So he's going to be going into science lessons next week, doing velocity. So they're going to be throwing objects and Max is going to chase them. So the students are learning in that way as well. We then chose Max and the reason we chose Max over any of the other litter was because that white blob on his head was actually a love heart when he was born and it was just meant to be. So this is Max's first few weeks weeks at Stanford Welland Academy. He's been coming in since the day we got him, so he was nine weeks old when he came in. As you can see from that picture, he's not phased. So he's in my office um, mainly. He has a pen that he can go in for safety. He also has a darkened um, crate if he needs some time out. Um, he chooses both. The main place he sleeps is my laptop bag for some reason, not sure why. Um, so he gets fully involved in school life. These two lovely ladies here, they are doing their volunteering DV with me to help train Max. So um, every Monday they come and train him with me. Not going over really well. But you know, we're getting there. Um, he gets involved in all mental health initiatives. So that's Hello Yellow down the bottom where he had his own yellow outfit to wear. Um, so from day one, he's been fully involved in school life. It's, he's not phased. He's not phased by anything, as you can tell. He's, crowds don't bother him. Screaming children don't bother him. <laughs> but he does have his own risk assessment and he has his own well-being plan. Four minutes, wow, okay. So he has his own well-being plan. And this is obviously Max now. So he leads a very full life, as you can see at home with us. Um, his well-being is priority. So if anything kicks off at school, he has his own well-being plan, risk assessment like any student would. So he gets time out and he gets looked after as well. Um, 
like I said, he reads. So I'll check. He, he kids read to him. Um, one of the main things is any anxious child that comes in comes to meet Max, and attendance has improved. I have a couple of young ladies who are undiagnosed with autism who, when they react, they come and they play tug of war. And when they play tug of war with Max, they're back in five, five minutes later into lessons. The emotion just simmers down. He's just wonderful. And this is some feedback from students. So a lot of people that did feel quite anxious about talking to people now will, as they have a distraction in Max. He goes into counselling sessions, therapy sessions. Uh, if a child needs to speak to me about um, emotional health, well-being, or safeguarding, they grab Max before they grab me. Um, and I like, shush, I like having Max around school because when I'm feeling upset, he brings joy and cuddles that make me feel better. And there is no better thing than that. And then parent feedback. This is a young lady that's attendance was so low. She meets me every day in the morning and we walk Max into school and she hasn't had a day off in months. And that means the world to me that a young girl's getting her education. And what are you walking at? And that's it. I've gone too far. And this is Max. So thank you very much for listening to us.